So the first things first is to mark our horizontal measurements. So we'll take from waist to hip, crouch length, from waist to knee, and the length of the trouser we are working on. Mark this and connect it into a straight line. So on the crouch line here, I'm going to be marking quarter of the hip measurement. I'm also going to be marking the same thing on the hip line and I'll be adding one and a half inches for seam allowance. One inch to join the side and half of an inch to join the inner seam. So I'll extend my crouch line by 2.5 inches for my crouch curve. What I have on my hip line, I'll mark the same thing on my waistline and connect this into a straight line. Now from that line, I'm going to be marking quarter of the waist I'm working with plus my one and a half inches seam allowance. So I'll just use my curve ruler and connect from there to my hip. And then I'll curve out my crouch depth now you're going to mark the midpoint of your crouch depth no the mark the midpoint mark the same thing on the knee and on the hem so i just marked it on the hem and then i'll mark it on my knee connect it into a straight line now from the knee i'm going to be marking one side i'm going to be marking quarter of the knee circumference i added one inch for the side and half an inch for the inseam allowance that's the 1.5 seam inch seam allowance that we've been adding since i mark the same thing on the hem and just connect and for the side you can cut it straight like this but for me i just tilt it in by like an inch so now we are done drafting out the front, you just go ahead, use your scissors and cut this out. So after cutting this out, to draft the back, we'll first replicate the front pattern. And the first thing I'm going to do is, from the crouch depth, from this point here, I'll come in by one inch. And then from the waistline, I'll come in by two inches. Use the ruler to connect these two lines and make sure to go above the waistline. We would raise the waist back. And the reason is because we need to accommodate the hip more. So I'll raise mine by 1.25 inches. And then from there, I'll diagonally place quarter of my waist plus my 1.5 inches seam allowance. And then just connect this. What we are trying to do for the back is move the measurement to the back to accommodate the hip more. Now, mark what you have on your indicate whatever it is you have on your hip from that one inch backwards on the crouch depth you mark the same thing and add about one inch or two inches depending on how free you want your palazzo pants to be at the back so for me i added one more inch so i'll just connect that straight to the waistline and then on the hem i'll mark one inch and connect the line now for the inseam here i mark 0 0.75 from that one inch i'll mark a double of my crouch depth so my crouch depth is 2.5 double of that is five inches that would be my new crouch depth for the back i'll just connect it to the 
0.75 that I marked at the hem. So when you connect it, we are done drafting out the back. Just cut this out. So when you're done cutting now, now let's cut our pocket. For the pocket, I already cut out pieces, four pieces actually, that measures a length of 11 inches and a width of 10 inches, right? Now we'll take the front side, the front piece of your trouser, the side, place it on the four pieces and trace out make sure this is arranged properly and just use your fabric chalk and trace out the sides because the side of the pocket needs to correspond with the sides of with the side of the trouser piece right so now just cut this out So after cutting this out, you can just go ahead and curve the tip of your pocket a bit or you can leave it the way it is. For me, I just curved it a little bit. Now indicate which is the right side and the wrong side on your pocket pieces. So two pieces would be for the pocket bag and two pieces would be for the facing. So I just took out two pieces for the pocket bag. And this piece here would be for the facing. Turn the pocket opening. So I just place two pieces like this. And I'll place the front piece back on it again. Now let's create the face, the pocket opening. From the side, I'll come in by 1.5 inches. And the opening for the length, I'll mark 5.5 inches. So when I sew in with half of an inch, it will now be 2 by 6. Cover out your opening and cut it out. So now it's time to start stitching. So the first thing I'll do is to close the crouch of the front. So pin it down. And then we'll close the crouch. This is the back. Pin it down. We'll leave about 10 inches open for zip. And close the remaining part of the crouch. 10 inches is open and close the remaining part. So after stitching, close the crouch. This is the back part. Okay, so this is the crouch. This is the 10 inches we left open for zip. Then to the front, we close the crouch also. Now it's time to attach our pocket. The first thing we'll do is to place the pocket facing. Right side facing each other. Pin it down. I go ahead to stitch close and do a top stitch. After doing the top stitch, we will take the pocket bag, place them right side facing each other to the pocket facing and close the sides. So now we are done. This is what it looks like. Our pocket is ready. We'll take the back piece of our trouser, right side facing each other. I'll close the sides by the one inch seam allowance we added. You can pin this down. When I'll close the inner crouch, the inner leg, with the half of an inch seam allowance we added, okay? 
so now this is what our trouser looks like you can go ahead to give this a good press for the waistband go ahead and measure around your waist circumference we would cut a strap of the waist circumference and we would use a depth of five inches a fused interfacing so make sure you use an interfacing to make the waistband more stable so the width i'm using is five inches so when i fold into two and stitch i'll be left with two inches okay now this is what we have i already ironed this close make sure that what you have here corresponds with what you have on your waist circumference take your waistband from the zip opening and just place it pin this down if you have to go ahead and stitch this and when you turn over this is what it looks like after that i would also attach my zip now this is the result of the palazzo pants we just made it's not for my mannequin it's for a client so i pinned a lot of the excesses to the back that's why it looks like this but thank you for watching